And uh, just if you got your Bibles, you can look, turn with me to Luke chapter 5. Very familiar portion of Scripture to many of you. But I want to bring us to where I feel like is a pivotal moment uh, for this congregation. Luke chapter 5, verse 3 says, He entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. And when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, Launch out into the deep, let down your nets for a draught. And Simon answering said unto him, Master, we have toiled all the night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. And when they had this done, they enclosed a great, multitude of fishes and their net break and with the help of the Lord I just want to preach a challenge to this congregation on this Sunday morning as you step into a new year and a new season and it's just this simple thought waiting on you waiting on you Lord thank you for your word Thank you for what you've done in the history of this church. Thank you for this pivotal moment that we're in right now and the destiny that you are calling us into. I pray today that our ears would be open to hear the word. Our heart would be ready to receive the word. Our minds would be ready just to accept what it means for our life. And before we walk out of these doors, let us settle the matter that we want to be a doer of the word, not just a hearer. So, God, I pray that in this service today, you would strengthen us, encourage us, direct us. God, help us to catch vision, help our faith to grow, and help us to leave different than we came. In Jesus' name, and let everybody say amen. And you may be seated. Waiting on you. I I don't know how many in this house is used to being the first dressed the first out the door, the first in the car, showing up early. And I don't want to get into trouble today, but I don't know how many is also waiting on somebody else. There are some people that are early birds. There are some people that are right on time people. And there's some people that will probably get here in the next few minutes. But in life, it, it doesn't matter what you're doing. We're always waiting on something. Right now, we're waiting for warm weather. We're, we're waiting for spring. We're waiting for summer. We, then when we get to summer, we'll be waiting on the fall. We'll be ready for the heat to go, and we'll be ready for cooler weather. We go to uh, the store, and guess what? You'll be waiting. You go to the restaurant, and you'll be waiting. We're always waiting on something. We're waiting on checks in the mail and waiting on bills in the mail. We're waiting on good reports to come from the doctor. We're waiting on this and we're waiting on that. We are always waiting. Always waiting. But I have come to let you know that we are not waiting on God today. God is already here. God's Word already wants to come to pass. His promises in Him are yes, and in Him, amen. There is nothing that God wants to do that we are somehow just waiting on Him to get His act together. God's not figuring out what the plan is for Calvary Church of Loyal. He's already figured it out. God's not sitting around this morning waiting on, well, I wonder what I'm going to do in their life, in their ministry, or in their home We are not waiting on God, but God is waiting on us. And I believe in this house today that there are destinies, there are promise, there is revival, and there is harvest. And God is just sitting around waiting on you and I to understand who we are and where we are and what he has called us to do. 
I believe today that so many of us at times have excuses why we have not accepted what God is wanting to do in our life or we have not stepped into what he is calling us to do and we have reasons. Some of them may feel justified and some of them may be the season of life we're in. Well, when I get my act together, I'll, I'll finally say yes to what God is calling me to do. When, when, my, when my life slows down, I'll say yes to what God is speaking into my spirit, when I see it clear, when I understand it more, when I feel stronger, when I feel more confident, when I feel like I have more education, when I feel like I've studied the Bible a little more, when I, when I feel like all of these things have come into alignment, then I can say yes to what God is calling me to do or giving me a burden to do. But I just felt a burden for this day and this congregation to tell some Somebody to just get up out of your no and get up out of your excuses and just say yes to what God is waiting on you to do. The time is right now. I believe Esther and the whole message of her life said it best. You have come to the kingdom for such a time as this. And I have come to Northwest Arkansas on this Sunday morning to tell you that the time is right now. It is not time to delay. It is not time to try to figure it all out. It is not try, time to go, God, when I, when I get everything in order, then I will say, yes, God is waiting on you right now to just stand up and surrender and say, God, I don't feel prepared. I don't feel like I got my act together. But whatever you want to do in my life right now, I'll say yes. Man, that word is a powerful word, and it's a short word. It's an easy word. It's kind of hard to mispronounce that word. We were talking last night about grammar, and I'm not real good with grammar, and, you know, God has to help me, and thank God for autocorrect and, you know, all these other technology things. Thank God for a spouse that has real good grammar, and, you know, it just cleans me up, you know, real, real good. and makes me sound good, but I'm not real good with grammar, but the word yes is kind of hard to mess up. It, you can draw it out, but it's still yes. <laughs> you can say it fast, and it's still yes. But it is a powerful three-letter word. It is a word that when we study through the pages of Scripture can release potential and power. It is a word when you begin to study through the Word of God as a part of the character of God. Because Paul said he was not yes and no, but yes only. And that all the promises in God in him were yes and in him amen. I have found that there is something powerful about being in the affirmative. There is something powerful about having a yes in your spirit. There is something powerful that happens when you and I can hear and discern what God is inviting us to be a part of or asking us to do, and the voice of God is beckoning into our spirit, into our dreams, into our prayer meetings, through sermons and messages. God is asking us to be a part of something. There is something powerful about saying yes to what God is waiting on us to do, and God wants you and I to understand today that everybody, whether you're new to this house or whether you've been apart a while, whether you're new in your faith journey or you've been walking with God for a while, everybody is given an invitation and an opportunity by God to be a part of something that is bigger than you will ever understand. And that yes in response from your spirit is what initiates God doing exceeding, abundant, and above all that we could ask or think. When we say yes, we are responding to God's call or God's invitation. And I want you to understand today that God is always initiating requests to you and I. Why? Because he has something tremendous in store when he gives a request. When he asks you to be a part of something, he knows who you are. He knows where you've been. He knows your strengths and your weaknesses. He knows your ups and your downs. He knows your imperfections. He knows what you've gotten together. He knows what you're hiding. 
and he knows what everybody else knows. He's God. And when he invites you to be a part of his perfect will and his perfect plan, he has plans that are bigger than you'll ever imagine. When we dig into the word of God and look at the life of the apostle Peter, God had big plans for the apostle Peter. But what I want us to understand is the way that we read scripture is we get to read the ending before we understand that the apostle Peter, he, he didn't know what was going to be a part of his life. We get to read the whole story in, in, in a few minutes or a few hours. Uh, but nobody knew in Luke chapter 5 who Peter was going to be. Nobody knew that Peter was going to be a great preacher. Nobody knew in Luke chapter 5 that Peter was going to be one of the fathers of the early church. Nobody knew in Luke chapter 5 that his shadow would heal the sick and the blind. And in the fifth chapter of Luke, we are introduced to Peter, not as a bishop, not as a preacher, or not as an apostle, but we are introduced to Peter as a fisherman. Jesus comes to Peter, and the first request that Jesus has of Peter, the first question that he is waiting on Peter to respond to is, can I use your boat? He doesn't ask him about ministry. He doesn't ask him about miracles. He doesn't ask him about the prophetic. He doesn't and ask him about dreams and vision. He doesn't ask him about revival and harvest. He just said, can I use what you already have to become a, a, a balcony or can I use it as a stage so that my message can be heard clear to the masses on the seashore, Peter? Can I use your boat to be a platform for my message? It wasn't about Peter's talent. It wasn't about Peter's ability. It was about what was available for the master to use. The first question that God will ever bring to you and I is not about your talents. It's not about your abilities. It's not about your potential. But it's about your willingness to let your life be a platform for his message. What Jesus was saying is I've got something I want to do on the earth. I've got to speak to the multitude that's gathered. And where I am right now, they can't effectively hear me. And I need something that I can step up on so that crowd can hear me louder. And we're in a world right now that God is needing a platform. He's needing a vessel. He's needing something that he can amplify his message through so his light can shine brighter into the darkness. So his words can be heard in places that only you and I are going to go. In order to say something that they can hear, I'm going to need your boat, Peter. And he gives Peter a request. Can I use your boat? I want to accomplish something right here and right now, but I need what you've got to accomplish it. Your boat is about to be used for kingdom business. Your boat is about to be my platform for my voice to be heard. And so the first question that Jesus is waiting on Peter to answer is, can I use your boat? It doesn't sound profound, but without the boat, the crowd would not be able to effectively hear him. He doesn't stop there. He keeps on giving invitations and questions that he's waiting on. He then goes on to say, will you launch out into the deep? Will you let down your nets for a draught? Request after request, question after question. Jesus is waiting on responses. And here's what I need us to understand today, that when God gives you a request, it's already part of a big plan. God's not walking around going, well, if you'll do this, then I'll figure something out. And if you'll do this, then maybe I can do this. And if you'll do this, I can pop. No, God already has a plan. He's just trying to see if you want to be a part of his big plan. You need to understand before you walk out of these doors in the next few moments that your life is significant and holds purpose. This church is not here by accident. The leadership is not here by accident. The saints are not here by accident. The children are not here by accident. The students are not here by accident. The elders are not here by accident. Those that have church history and a faith walk are not here by accident. And those that are new in their faith walk, you're not here by accident. God has a plan that goes far beyond what you and I will ever understand. He's just trying to see if you'll respond to his questions. Do you want to be a part of what I'm trying to do in these last days? And when God says, Peter, I want to use your boat. Peter, I want you to launch out into the deep. Peter, I want you to let down your net. You've got to understand that this request was already a part of the plan of God. And I feel like somebody needs to let that sink into their spirit for a moment, that God was not winging it like you and I wing it sometimes. He was 
not going, well, if, he, if Peter don't do this, I don't know what I'm going to do. No, he already had a plan to do something great with Peter's life. He was just waiting on Peter to decide whether or not he wanted to be a part of what he had in store for him. And not only does God have a plan for your life, but God is always working that plan out. Whenever you see something happening on the earth, you have to understand it didn't catch God off guard. It's all a part of the plan of God, and God is working out that plan. Whatever happened in your life this last week, God had a plan, and he was working out that plan. You may not have understood it. It may have thrown you off for a moment. Whatever happened in 2022 may have thrown you off for a moment, or 2021, or 2020 threw a few of us off for a little bit. But God had a plan, and he never abandoned his plan. He never walked away from his plan. Matter of fact, he can work things together for his good, for our good and his glory. And we have to understand God is working the plan when it looks like it makes sense, and God is working the plan when it doesn't look like it's making sense. Because God is working all things according to the counsel of his perfect will, Scripture says. And this is significant significant because I want us to understand what is significant about that is not only does God have a plan and not only is he working a plan, but I'm going to be a part of that plan somewhere along the way. Everybody in this house needs to leave today with a fresh revelation that I am a part of the plan of God. God, in these last days, if he wanted Peter to live in 2023 or Paul to be here, or Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John, they would have been here, but you're here. And God has a plan in these last days for this end time revival and the great outpouring and miracles, signs, and wonders. He has a plan for you to be a part of it, but he's just waiting on you, just like he was waiting on Peter to accept his part of being a part of the plan of God. When Jesus said, Peter, I need to use your boat, when he requested the boat and requested for him to launch out into the deep, you need to understand that this was an invitation from Jesus to Peter to be a part of the plan. And this is crazy, but this almighty, eternal, powerful, alpha, omega God, the one who knows all and sees all, this powerful God requested for Peter to be a part of his purpose and his plan. And this week and last week and last month and last year, God has been beckoning some of us to be a part of something greater, something bigger, something that that he's just wanting a yes from. You don't have to figure it all out. You don't have to feel like you're qualified or ready for it. You don't have to feel like you got your act together. God's just looking for a yes to come from your spirit. You may feel weak. You may feel broken. You may feel insecure. You may battle fear and rejection. You may feel like you failed God a million times, but all God is looking for is a yes to come from your spirit. Because God can work with a yes, but he can't overwhelm a no. You consider this in the life of Peter, it all makes sense because what we see is everything was coming together at the right time so Jesus would get the glory and Peter would get a blessing. Because what I need us to understand is that you and I are intentionally placed by God right where we are right now in this city, in this county, in this region, in your job, in your neighborhood, in your school. You've got everything you need to be a part of God's plan. I know we're trying to figure it out. We want to be more qualified. We want to be more prepared. and We want to be more ready for what God is doing. But it's a yes that activates the power of God being released. Not our talents. Not our abilities. Not our confidence. It's our yes. It's that complete surrender when God is waiting on this. And all of it is because when God looked at his master plan, he saw one place in the puzzle that only your life could fit and fix. And he got everything else in order. And he put everything that you would need around you. And he placed you right where you are for a purpose. And he said, I'm going to send you a request, Peter. Can I use your boat? Can I send you a request, Peter? Are you willing to? To move out of your comfort zone in the shallow waters? Are you willing to get your nets back out again and just obey my voice? All I need you to do is say yes when I ask you something. And when God comes requesting and sends you an invitation and invites you and I to be a part of his purpose and his plan, I want everyone to hear me on this Sunday morning. It's not as much about our ability, but it is always about our availability. I am thankful for ability, but I want you to know in my 
40 years of this uh, of life and my 20 years of full-time ministry that God will always take availability and trump ability every time. And I just want to say to this church on this Sunday morning that what God is wanting to do in you and through you and for you, that God is initiating the request already. He is waiting on this church right now. It is a pivotal moment. There is something deeper that it's happening. There's an undercurrent that God is tugging and saying, will you, will you step out? Will you make the move? Will you pray? Will you worship? Will you give? Will you surrender? Will you be a part? Will you serve? Will you cross the road and teach a Bible study? Will you invite somebody to church? Will you pray a little longer? Will you surrender to my purpose? Will you get in discipleship process a little more? There are all kind of questions that God is just waiting on you to say, yes. It's not complicated. It's simple. It's not overwhelming. It's simple. It's just surrender because it has very little to do with your ability and much more to do with your availability. And God is finding somebody who will not be so busy that they lose the focus and they lose the assignment and they'll have time for God. There's more to life than going through the motions and having just a spiritual encounter on Sunday. And some of us are are too known by our natural identity and our natural experience and we're not known yet in the terms of our spiritual identity and our spiritual assignment that God is calling us to do. But the only difference is just saying yes. I want you to know today that Jesus saved you and I for more than just making it to heaven. You've got a purpose. There's a spiritual assignment. There's kingdom business that can only be accomplished in your life. And because you and I were created not just to get to heaven, we also were created to take people with us. We weren't just created to go to heaven for ourselves. We are called to bring heaven to earth in some dimension. And I have come today just to stir, if it's just one person, if it's just one person that walks out of these doors today and understands, you know what? God's been inviting me to be a part of something. I've been running. I've been hiding. I've been ashamed. I've been afraid. I, I, I haven't felt worthy, but I'm going to say yes. I'm just going to take that first step. And God, whatever you're calling me to do, whatever you want me to do, God's saying, can I use your boat? Can I use your gift? Can I use your time? Can I use your ability? I gave it to you. Everything that you have, God gave it to us. But will you give it back and give it back and surrender to him for his glory? Will you say yes? I want to tell you right now, if you don't know, there's power in the response of a yes. Those who say yes make history. The Bible Bible tells us of a leader named Moses who sent out 12 spies, and the 12 spies go to the land that is flowing with milk and honey. It is the land that God called them to. It is the land that God said every place that the sole of your feet is going to touch, it's going to be yours. But Moses decides to send some spies out to to get a report of the land. God's already given it to them. They're just going to go check it out and see what it's all about. Uh, Please hear me. The 12 spies did not go to the promised land with the assignment of finding out whether or not they could take the land or not. It was to go spy out the land and see what God had given them. It was to bring back a good report. It was already there. It was the promised land. They were going to check out how good it was. And the 12 spies go and they find out it was amazing. It was wonderful. It was majestic. It was was more than they could imagine. They come back with clusters of grapes. They are literally tasting of the promises of God. Those grapes are so big, they are draping them over a pole that took two men to carry them back. And they come back to a people who have been living in bondage for 400 years years and the 12 spies get up when testimony service and say look at the harvest look at the blessing look at the provision and everybody in the camp of Israel they're going whoa you know we're we're, get, we're being delivered out of something we're about to step into something we're going to get to have grapes like that and there's going to be milk and honey and it's going to be amazing and they say yeah it is amazing it looks amazing but we can't take it And 10 of the 12 said, we can't do this. But hear me, I cannot tell you one name of the 10 who brought back a bad report. Go back and look. Study the scripture. You're not going to find one name of the people that said no. But you do know the two that say yes. Because Joshua and Caleb stilled the people and said, we are well able 
Let's go up right now. Let's do it. Matter of fact, 40 years later, after having to wander with people who said no and had to die out in the wilderness, they're finally about to possess the land. They go, we're old now, but we'll still say yes. Do, we need, do I need to fight for it? Yes. Am I willing to take the journey? Yes. I, because there was a yes in their spirit. History, they are known because of their yes. But the men who said no, we don't know anything about because history is written by those like Joshua and Caleb that said yes. Yes, there's giants there, but we can overcome them. Yes, there's battles there, but we can win the battle because there is a promised land that we have accepted that we are willing to say yes because history is made by those who say yes to God and nobody remembers the names of those who said no. We remember Caleb and Joshua because they said yes to the will of God. They said yes to the mountain. And we believe that the promised land belongs to us and our family. They said yes. And because they said yes, they're the only two from their generation that walked into the promised land. But they're not the only ones who said yes. Noah said yes and saved his family and ultimately the entire world. Abraham said yes, and God made him the father of many nations. Moses said yes, and led Israel out of Egypt. Rahab said yes, and saved her whole house. Daniel said yes to God, and the lion couldn't destroy him. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said yes to God, and the fire couldn't burn them. Mary said yes, and gave birth to the Savior of the world. Peter said yes, and became the fisher of men. Paul said yes, and the Gentiles came into the kingdom of God. The apostles said yes, and the evangelists their known world and turn the world upside down because history will be written by those who get an assignment from God and say yes to what he's waiting on and the results will always be given because of what God can do not because of what man can do but it is contingent on the yes in their spirit because God always gives the request and we always have the opportunity to give the response and your response will determine the results of your life when Peter got the request from Jesus can I use your boat can I launch can you launch out into the deep and let down your net? Peter had a plenty of excuses why he couldn't respond in the affirmative. He said, Master, we've toiled all night. Master, I'm a fisherman. Sometimes you catch things. Sometimes you don't. And we haven't caught anything tonight. Master, this is not the time to go fishing. We, there, there's a right time to go fishing, and there's a wrong time to go fishing. There's sometimes you just go to dunk worms, and sometimes you go to catch fish. And Master, we've already cleaned the nets. We've already put put up everything. We have caught nothing. And somebody needs to hear me today. Some, some of you watching me today, you've been working hard. You, you've been putting in the work and no, there's been no results. And I'm not just talking about your job. I'm talking about in life. You, you, you've been doing what you know to do and it feels like at the end of the day, nothing's changed and nothing's happening. But Jesus said, I know Peter, I know you've caught nothing. I know your current condition, but I'm still asking you a question. I know you put in the work, but I'll, now I'm asking you a question. I know you've been faithful, but now I'm giving you an invitation to be a part of something bigger. I know you've been faithful to church, but now I brought you to a pivotal moment, and there is a divine question from me. Before you were doing it on your own, you've been doing it all the work, but now I brought you to the kingdom for such a time as this. Now there's something supernatural I'm inviting you to be a part of. You see, God brings us to appointed times. I believe that there are due seasons that cannot be explained. I believe we can worship for years, pray for years, fast for years, be faithful for years, but there comes an intersection of a divine moment where God says, yes, I know what you've been doing. Yes, you've been faithful, but will you say yes to me one more time? Will you sacrifice one more time? Will you give one more time? Will you pray one more time? Will you take the step of faith? one more time. Can I use your boat? Will you launch out into the deep? I know you know what you're doing, but will you do it one more time? There are a lot of folks that have been faithful and they'll tell the, no, tell the Lord no because they're tired or they're weary or they're wounded. I, I put the nets up. But Peter said, hey, I'm going to state the obvious, but there's something tugging at me right now. And he said, nevertheless, at your word. He didn't say, I feel this. He said, I know this because of your word. 
He didn't say, I've got goosebumps about what you're saying. (laughs) He didn't say, oh, I see what's about to happen. Oh, I understand it now. We just needed you on the boat. Oh, this makes sense. We don't know what we're doing. (laughs) Nevertheless, at thy word, there's something that happens in a believer's life. When you state the obvious, you state reality, but then you get up and say, Lord, I'm going to stand on your word. I'm going to make a move based off of your word. I'm going to say yes based off your word. Peter got the invitation and said, yes, you can have my boat. Yes, we'll move to the deep. Yes, we'll let down the nets. Yes, we'll do whatever you want us to do because of your word. Something will change. And the Bible said that Peter responded to the request of Jesus. He said, yes. Do you understand that not only was the one giving the invitation to Peter. He was not only giving the request to Peter, but the same time he's talking to Peter, he's talking to the fish. Because as they left shallow waters and headed to deep waters, there was fish going this way and fish going that way and fish that were in deep waters and fish that were up top. And there was a school of fish over here and all of a sudden they didn't know why. But they said, you know what, I'm going to go over here. And this school of fish said, I'm going to go over here. Because the scripture says that when they let down their nets, they caught a mu- they didn't catch one at a time and throw it in the boat. They caught a multitude of fish to the point that their nets began to break. That tells me that as Peter was saying yes, God was aligning the response to the yes already. Before, As Peter was leaving shallow waters, the fish were getting prepared. The miracle was getting in place. The provision was moving into the right location. The blessing was showing up. Peter didn't see it. The fishermen didn't see it. It was beyond their sight. But somewhere in deep waters, God was saying, if you'll say yes to me, I'll take care of the rest. They had been out all night trying to figure out where the fish were. But a yes to God is what aligned the miracle in the right place at the right time. Somebody hear me on this Sunday morning. You may be a daddy or a mama that's been praying for something, but if you'll just say yes to what God's been putting in your spirit and your prayer closet, if there's a man of God that'll just say yes to what's been tugging in your heart around this altar the last few weeks, if there's a woman of God that'll just say yes to what God's been speaking over your life and over your future, There is something that God is going to do that's beyond sight. It's beyond what you can do on your own. If I'll say yes, if I'll surrender, and I feel like the Lord is talking to somebody on this Sunday morning, you've been praying, you've been fasting, you've been sowing, you've been faithful, you've been worshiping, you've been committing, and you said yes, 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 whatever I've got is yours, Lord. And I have come to tell you the fish are on the way, the miracle's on the way. You're about to be in the right place at the right time time and it cannot be explained by man. I'm thankful that the house is full this morning but there's another service to fill and there's another there's another building to fill and there's more ministries to launch and there's more leadership team that need to step up but it's just waiting on a yes. There's a revival coming to your house. There's a harvest coming to your house. That financial miracle is about to show up. That that restoration is about to happen but it's just waiting on a yes Lord. I know it's simple today. I know it's not profound. Uh, uh, Tomorrow, uh, next Sunday, your pastor will get up and take you back into deep waters. But I've just come with a simple three-letter word. If you can get it in your spirit, I feel like it's contingent on what God is trying to release in these last days. And the Lord sent me here on this Sunday morning to tell you, he's just waiting on you. But here's the result of saying yes, and I'm almost done. Not only is God wanting to bless your life, But your yes will not only be a blessing for your life, but I believe that your yes can be a blessing to everyone connected to you. Because when Peter said yes, fish jumped in his net. So many fish got in the nets that their nets almost break. And what did they have to do? They had to get some more boats and some more nets. Because what? Jesus was doing that day was not only going to bless the one that said yes, but everyone connected with him. 
You see, the revival is bigger than the seats that you have in this building right now. And the revival is bigger than the building that you're in right now. And the harvest is greater than anything you've ever seen before. When you say yes and get to deep waters and you give your vessel over to him, he's not just going to bless your life. It's not just about goosebumps and feelings and everything being great in your world. But there's going to be something that every person that you come in contact are going to feel the effects of your yes to God. He not only wanted to bless Peter, but he had James and John in mind too. Peter, if you'll let me use your boat. Peter, if you'll launch out into the deep. Peter, if you'll let down your nets. I'm going to bless those that are connected to you because that's always the result of saying yes to God. And I feel so strong in the Holy Ghost right now to say to somebody's life today, if you'll get ready and you'll say yes, it's not just going to be a blessing for your life, your home, your family, your mind, your finances, or your health, or your children. But everybody connected to you is about to be connected to a blessing and their life is going to be blessed because of your yes but can you move out of shallow waters to deep waters can you surrender your vessel to be a platform for his message will you take your nets the things you've been doing day after day and will you do it one more time because God is beckoning you and the next thing you know Peter's on his knees worshiping Jesus James and John have a boat full of fish and here's what's crazy all he was waiting on was a yes. So I don't know how you walked in here today. I don't know if this is your first service or for the last decade or so of this church you've been here faithfully. But I believe in every person God is still waiting on a yes. You know what I found out? You don't outgrow the need to say yes to God. Well, I've been faithful. I got my act together. I've done things for God. You know what I found in walking with him the last 40 years and 20 years in the ministry, eight years of planting this church that God just keeps bringing me to places where he's like, Ryan, I know what you have done, but will you? I said at a conference just a few weeks ago and the preacher got done, I couldn't even weep anymore. I couldn't even cry anymore. I couldn't pray anymore because I just felt that overwhelming burden and beckoning to my spirit. It's time for more. And will you? Will you say yes? And I found that that yes is connected to what only he can do. I'm thankful for what you can do. I'm thankful this great leadership team I got to set. I'm thankful. But I don't want to just see what I can do. I want to see what he can do. I want there to be a release in deep waters. We were in prayer last night with the leadership team, and I said it. I said, some of you in this room are feeling things you don't see. But there's about to be a moment where that, what you've been feeling, you're going to see in reality. And I feel that word in this house today, because think about it for a moment. As they got that out to deep waters and put the, anybody ever been fishing in deep waters? I, I love going out to shallow waters, and you look down and you see the fish coming, and you're like, oh yeah, over there. There it is, I just got to chase it. But you go out to deep waters and you get on that boat and you look out, you know what you see? Nothing. It's just dark. Until that fish gets up into the shallow part, up close to the top of the water, you don't see anything. Jesus said, get out to the deep and let down your nets. And as they got out to the deep, they would have got their freshly cleaned nets and looked out and they would have not seen the multitude of fish. They didn't cast their nets based off of what they saw. They cast their nets based off of the word. It wasn't a, a feat. They didn't worship because they saw the fish. They didn't pray because they saw the fish. They didn't start giving and sacrificing and fasting because they saw the miracle was on the way. No, they just threw the net because of the word. But here's what's beautiful. Anybody in this house ever go fishing? What's the first sense you get when you catch a fish? It's feeling. Sometimes it's a tire or a tree limb for me. But, but long before you see the fish, you feel it. 
long before they saw the multitude of fish, they felt something. And I believe in homes that are connected with this church, there have been saints that have been feeling something you don't see yet. And I believe the leadership team has been feeling some things you don't see yet. And I believe there's some young believers, you've been feeling some things, but it hadn't come to fruition yet. You've been hearing some things, and you've been making moves based off the Word. You've been responding to what's being taught and preached from the Word of the Lord. You, you've been doing it, but you don't see it yet. And I have come with a prophetic word for somebody on this Sunday morning that what you've been feeling is about to align with what you're seeing. Just one more prayer. Just one more service of worship. Just one more act of dedication. Just one more yes to God. I'm going to get involved. One more service. One more prayer meeting. One more life group. One more youth service. One more Sunday school class. One more invitation to church. One more Bible study. One more co-worker that you're sowing seed in. Just, I, I'm feeling something that I don't see but I'm just going to keep doing something based off the word. Come on, every eye closed right now, every heart open right now. Would you just pray right where you are? Come on, if God's been speaking to some things in your spirit, go ahead and pray through what's been getting you to say no. God's waiting on you right now. We are not waiting on God for the next season of this church. We are not waiting on God for the revival and harvest to come. God is waiting on you right now. God, I rebuke fear. I rebuke insecurity. I rebuke doubt. God, if there's somebody in this room that's been struggling, if they've been, they've been falling short, God, I rebuke that temptation that's trying to bind them from saying yes right now. I pray that their heart would begin to be open to a yes right now. I pray faith would begin to rise. I pray boldness would begin to rise. I pray strength would begin to rise. I pray deliverance would come right now from a no. Deliver Calvary Church right now from the no. Deliver us into a mentality of yes. Yes, we're ready for miracles. Yes, we're ready for signs and wonders. Yes, we're ready for revival. Yes, we're ready for harvest. Yes, we're ready for increase. Yes, we're ready for ministry. Yes. Come on, could you stand with me all over this house if you're ready for what God is trying to release? If you need the Holy Ghost today, hear me today. All God's waiting for is a yes and going, Lord, I'm ready for whatever you want in my life. All you have to do is, is set yourself free through repentance and launch out into the deep and go, God, I may not understand everything, but I'm ready. Come on, if God's been speaking to your heart about ministry, about burdens, about doing more, come on right now, let God deliver you from the seashore and get you out into deep waters. Come on, why don't you connect with somebody around you right now before we make a move to this altar and say, God, deliver us from a no get a yes in our spirit. Let us be a church that's known for being a yes. Let us be a congregation that is known for our yes. Come on, pray for your brother right now. Pray. Come on, this has got to be a corporate effort. Come on, if we're going to move into the promises of God, we've got to have more that are saying yes. We don't need just Joshua and Caleb. We need others to rise up and say, our time is now. Come on. Is there anybody that step out of your pew right now and make your way down front with hands raised and say, yes, 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 pastor, I'm ready. Yes, leadership team, I'm ready. Yes, God, I'm ready. Come on. Come on. Is there anybody that make your way down front and say, I'm ready for what God wants for my life. I'm ready for the dreams and vision. I'm ready for the calling. I'm ready for the anointing. Come on. Come on, young and old. Bring somebody with you right now with hands raised all over this house. Come on, lift up your hands. God's moving. There's miracles, signs, and wonders that are on display in this house. Come on. Come on, bring somebody with you.